the in-depth details of our rotary polisher. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. We're going to be taking this apart in front of you to show you how it's built, how it's put together, why it works the way it does, and what we like about it. Ivan, you have been a proponent of the rotary polisher for as long as I've known you. Exactly. Finishing with the rotary on speed one with our red jeweling pad, our, our foam rotary jeweling pad, it is just a breeze. Exactly. Shining paint up to the max. Exactly. And we want to bring our own tools to market for a couple reasons. We want to bring the highest quality but best value tool we could. And that means, yes, it's a tool made in China, but it's made to our specifications. And we're going to dive in and show you what those specifications are within the tool. Yeah, because a lot of people may say, okay, you're making a tool, whatever. Yeah. Why should I buy from you? We wanted to show you exactly why. Exactly. So first thing, the cord. We have a 30-foot cord, 9 meters for those in a metric country, and it's a nice, very flexible rubber cord. It's not one of those cheap vinyl cords that it's always squiggly on the floor. This one, if you put it straight, it's going to stay straight. It doesn't have a memory to it, so it's a very, very flexible cord. We also have a little piece of Velcro here that's attached to the cord that when you're done using the cord, instead of wrapping it around the machine, wrap it like this. Much better cord management this way. So that's the first part. That's simple, but it makes a big difference. Right. You know, fighting with the cord is not a good thing. And with a 30-foot cord for most vehicles, especially in a single car garage, you won't need an extension cord. You could ask us, why didn't you come out with a cordless machine, Ivan? What, what do you say to those folks? Cordless is great technology. And eventually, we will have a cordless machine. But for now, the majority of sales still remains with the, the corded machines. The corded machines as of the recording of this, are lighter weight and they're better balanced. So I prefer using a corded machine. A cordless machine is great when I'm teaching, it's great when I'm just doing a spot correction, but doing a whole car with a cordless machine, it gets heavy. One question people are gonna ask themselves is, does this tool have value? Is this tool well built? Right, and that's what we're gonna dive into. Now, in terms of value, like we said, we had the 30-foot rubber cord. It comes with two backing plates. So unlike a lot of rotaries that don't even come with a backing plate, we include a five and six inch backing plate with it. Now, one thing we don't have on our tool that a lot of people have noticed, we don't have a, a spindle lock button. We don't need one. We have a 25 to one gear reduction in here, meaning that every time the motor turns 25 times, it just turns this once. So that gear reduction means that we don't really need a button to remove this. All we have to do is give it a little hit, and off it spins. Standard 5811 thread here, so standard in North America. For those buying the tool in Europe or other countries, yes, they will have the, the M14 for this when that point is needed. We have rubber comfort handles here and at the front. So depending on how you want to hold it, you can do so. One of the key components that we've worked on is actually the switch. And both Nick and I are proponents of using the trigger lock. And the trigger lock on some tools, it's almost a, you know, a torture test trying to put the trigger lock in. This is just intuitive. It's easy. It, yeah. We had a, a student here earlier today. This was his first time using the tool. I told him to put the trigger lock on. He didn't even look at it. He just automatically knew where it should be. And that's what we've done here. So it's a larger button, and it protrudes from the machine, making it very easy to lock. We hope you don't even notice it when you're using it, and you forget how amazing it is, because it's when things are noticeable to you that they're usually bad. Exactly. Right? It, yeah. like, this just feels very intuitive. It may not seem like a super sexy feature, but I agree that it's great. Right. We also have this here, so when the machine is resting, you can rest it. It's not going to roll away on you. Next, the brushes. Brushes are one of the wear items on a machine that you should be able to change and change easily for yourself. Now, is that something you can do on other machines in the market as well? Every machine you can change the brushes. Because I never once tried to fix my own polisher. Right. But sometimes you actually have to take half the casing apart to get to the brush. Okay. We just have two little screws. This piece pops off and it's snapped in there rather tightly. There we go. And now we have access to the brushes. The brushes are very simple and easy to change. They're not a very complicated thing to do. So let me grab a little tool here. So you just move the spring off to the side, 
pull that, and now the brush can come up. Carbon brushes, this is what is against the armature of the tool, and as the tool spins, this is wearing down slowly, and the spring is pushing it down. And if you're a, an everyday user of the tool, it might take you two years to get through a brush. We include a set of brushes with the machine, and let me take the other brush out. And the reason I'm taking both brushes out, we're, by the end of this video, this machine will be in pieces here. And by the way, if you're curious how to service your machine, we have another video that Ivan did, and it has chapters in there. So it has chapters with time codes, so you don't have to watch the whole dang thing. But look for the issue if there's one that you're struggling with. Uh, right. From cord to brushes to grease on the machine, yep. you address all the different ways. You take the whole machine apart and how to service it. So you're just trying to basically make this, hey, if you have an issue, because with tools, over time, things can happen, you can take care of it yourself. Right. There's, you know, common wear items on a tool are the cord, the brushes, and the switch. And we've gone over how to change that. And obviously, changing the, uh, the grease in your gear case once in a while is always a good thing. Why just... is that, by the way? Uh, grease, just like the oil in your engine, it's not, uh, it's not for life. It's there, it eventually starts breaking down. So we want to make sure that you have good grease that isn't, uh, you know, it gets soft after a while. There's people out there who just want to buy the tool and just use it. And right. they're never going to open this up in their whole lives. Right. And that's great. Uh, they'll be buying more tools. <laughs> but if you do a, a little maintenance like this once in a while, it's great. Now. This tool, one of the, the features we really looked at was wire management. I've been in power tools for decades. Uh, I used to work for Porter Cable doing R&D. And one of the things I didn't like about a lot of the tools on the market was how all these cords inside are not, that don't have a place. We have cord management pins, everything to hold the cords and the, all the, the wires in place so that they're located properly. So that is something that was very important to me. The switch is very simple to change, four wires and they're screwed in, they're not clipped in, so they're very easy to get at to. The speed controller, same thing. You take both sides of the handle, it just slides up, a few connections, and it's good to, good to change as well. These are items, hopefully, you'll never need to change. But if you do, you can. Now, we have a warranty, it's a one-year warranty, we'll do all this for you, but sometimes it's just easier for you to do it and a lot faster. If you say, look, I know it's my switch, we'll send you a switch, everyone's happy. Next part is the gear case at the front. So we see all the wire management, how everything is held in place. There's no wires just floating around that when you put the case back together, you're not sure if you're pinching a wire somewhere. There's no wires to pinch because they're all held in place in many locations. Let me grab my screwdriver again. And we have two keys on the side. Next, this comes apart in two halves. And just like a lot of the other things, we have a little tab here that clips in, meaning this isn't loose, it's not floating around. Everything ties together like a, you know, a good Meccano set or a good Lego set. Yeah. So everything is tied together. Meccano, what's that? Oh, you're too young for that. So. I know Legos, my kids yeah, use them. Yeah, oh, Meccanos are a, uh, a more industrialized version of Lego. They're, there you go. They're metal, all aluminum gear case, obviously. And let's take it apart again here. As you do this, what are you most proud of in terms of the machine that you know we've brought to market? Well, the quality of the build the balance of the machine, so the, the user experience. It's an extremely quiet machine, uh, it's smooth, it's 600 to 2500 RPM. And that was very important for me, the low end, the 600 RPM for polishing. And we are, personally, I never use a machine higher than speed one. I don't like anything over 800 RPM. The 600 RPM was a bit of a compromise because we could have actually brought it down to 400 RPM. But at 400 RPM, now it's turning too slowly and we're not getting the cooling that we want to get out of the machine. We are not getting all that, the airflow that we need. 
Really? So a right. little bit more speed on the backing plate right. gives you more airflow? Exactly. And that cools down the pad? Well, it's actually the fan inside the machine. We'll get to that later. But it's not cooling down the pad. I'm talking about the machine itself. Oh. Some machines on speed one, if you use them for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, they get so hot you can't hold on to them. This one, you can use it all day long and it's barely going to be warm. Now, the gear case itself, we have a double reduction gear. So most gears are basically like this here. So they have the first part of the gear that spins the, the gear that's down here. And that's about a, a five or four and a half to one reduction ratio. And then the spindle will be right here. Next, we have NSK bearings throughout. So high quality bearings. Yeah, what does NSK bearing mean to It's a brand of bearing. Okay. And it's a high quality brand of bearing. We're not using a, a cheap bearing. The other aspect is now, instead of the spindle being here, like most machines, we have another gear reduction. So again, the motor is turning quickly and this is turning slowly. Now, this gear reduction has also helped us do another thing is we have the 600 RPM low end, but we also have the 2500 RPM high end. And a lot of tools that start at four, six, or 800 RPM rarely go over two or 2200 RPM. The 2500 RPM is to clean our pads and to spin out the excess moisture in the pads. And some of the tools we've used over the years, when we're going to spin out, especially our red rotary drilling pad, the machine isn't fast enough to dry the pad. So this, we have both ends. We have the higher speed that we want and the lower speed that we need to cut with. If you've learned anything about polishing from Ivan, you know that he teaches a system. And we right. teach a system at DIY Detail in terms of polishing. We cut with a dual action polisher, we finish with a rotary. The only time you use the high speed with the rotary is to spin out your pad after you clean it. We clean the pads a certain way in the pad washer because you want to polish with a lightly damp pad, which you polish with on speed one on the rotary, but you free spin at a high speed in the pad washer. Exactly. It makes it sound more complicated the way I'm saying it, but really it is about as simple as it gets. It is a system, Ivan. Yeah, definitely. And just like the pads and the polish, these polishers are designed to work well with our system. Yeah. So the gear case comes off as a separate piece, and now you have the gear on the spindle. And you can see another one of our bearings here. And then we can split this apart. And what is that? So we have a few things here. This is the rotor of the machine. And you'll notice the fan, it's not a straight cut, it's a helical cut. That's to get more airflow. And the airflow in this machine comes in by the brushes, cooling them forward and comes out of the bottom of the machine here cooling the pad area. So that gives us great airflow through the machine. Now this is a precision balanced rotor. You'll notice a balancing mark here. There's a few more here. So they're wound, they're properly sealed and precision balanced. And like I said, our fan is extreme for the industry. So we have a lot of fins on the fan that, and say that a couple times in a row, but anyways, we have a lot of fins on the fan that make it so it's moving a lot of air even at a slow speed. And that really makes a big difference when you're doing the machine. The other thing that we have is a constant speed control. And that's what this little ring here is for. So inside this little ring, there are magnets. And as this turns, the speed controller, which has a hall sensor, hall effect sensor. So those of you that are auto mechanics, you know what a hall effect sensor is. It's what's used in your distributor to determine how fast the engine is turning. So your RPM, your uh, TAC is usually a Hall effect sensor attached to the distributor. This is giving constant feedback to keep the RPM at a steady, even rate at all times. Okay. So if we set it to 600 RPM, it's going to stay at 600 RPM. See, and that's what I, the end user, just want. Just yeah. give me a machine that works. Exactly. I, I, by this point, if you're like, I get it, I'm buying yeah. it, I like it, that's kind of where I would get to. Like, all right, I don't really care, I believe Ivan, I know it works. but. This is the why. Yeah. And again, the field. So we have here this piece, again, for air movement management. It's not just open in here. Uh, this piece is something that you know, we actually spent a bit of time designing. And then we have the field coil in here. Again, properly sealed wires. It's not just the copper that's wound. It's wound and epoxied. 
So it's going to stay in there. And again, a high quality field, everything is there, precision machine. What, what's the difference between this and what people might think of as a cheap blank machine? So the cheap machines uh, that you know you can pick up for a lot lower price. There's ones on Amazon for 80 bucks. Oh yeah, there and you know there's stores that have lower lower price machines. The quality of the bearings, first of all, the quality of the machining, the tolerances. We have a much tighter tolerance level on our machining than a lot of other companies do. We have the double reduction gears that cost more to do, obviously. We have the better fan that is moving a lot of air. We have this insert that a lot of tools don't have. This is designed to help move that air more efficiently. Uh, we have a higher quality of switch. We have a much higher quality of wire than most of those tools. And if you've bought wire recently, you know how much this stuff costs. So that higher quality of wire, higher quality, every component we could get as a higher quality, yes, we're buying in China, but in China you can buy tools two ways. I want to buy a tool for this price. They'll build you a tool for that price. Yeah. Or I want to buy a tool for this quality, what's the price? And we went to, this is what we want, what's the price? Excellent. Yeah, and you know the, the assembly, of course, is very easy to do, but we'll put that together off camera. Nick, any other questions? Okay, I do have a question, Ivan. So we have five and six inch backing plates that come with our machine. Exactly. Do you prefer a five or six inch backing plate? Does it change the performance of the jeweling pad to you? I prefer a six inch, it's easier to balance, and I can get in to more places with a six inch than a five inch. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I'm not one to break out a one inch machine or a three inch machine. I can get it in just about any place you want with my six inch pad. You mentioned balance on the rotary. What does that feel like to the end user? Basically, I can use this machine with two fingers. And balance is forward to aft balance, left to right. You'll also notice it's a very low profile. So if we put this here, sorry, if we put this back here, the, this sits right there. It's not up like this. So the closer the machine is to the surface, the easier it is to balance. You're not, your center of gravity is much lower. So we went for the lowest center of gravity we could. Some machines will have a secondary gear case, but instead of having it in line like ours, they have it below the tool. So you have, you have the tool that's here, and then you have this gear case sitting down here, putting the pad further away from the, the surface. There's guys out there who are gonna wanna be cutting with a wool pad yep. on speed five. They don't care about your system, maybe they do, but yeah, they're but still gonna do what they're gonna do when you're not looking, whatever. Yeah. Can they still do that on this machine? Oh, definitely. Yeah, it'll, it'll take what you wanna throw at it. If you wanna buff with a big wool pad on a boat or something on speed five, yeah, by you're all just means. gonna do what you're gonna do, this'll do that job too. It will, and with the 1100 watt motor, it's gonna do it with ease. Okay. Yeah, we, we sort of went overboard on, the, on this aspect of it, the motor, for a couple reasons. For the DA, and that's a separate video, but we have a 25 millimeter stroke DA. 25 millimeter stroke takes a lot of power for it to power through that stroke and that offset. We decided, for simplicity's sake, for users, for ourselves, and for parts availability and all of that, to this part of both machines is identical. There's no difference between this half of this on the DA and on the rotary. So an 1100 watt motor. 1100 watt motor, a little overkill for this, great for the 2500 or the 25 millimeter stroke DA. Well, if you wanna learn more about the dual action polisher, we created a very similar video where we explain it in depth. And folks, you can find that video right here.